I think it's becoming increasingly obvious to everyone that people are pretty fed up with the isolation that uh, COVID-19 has imposed. For some, it's even impacted their mental well-being, not knowing what's going to happen next and asking themselves, well, where, where do I go from here? Now, shortly after Jesus' crucifixion, Simon Peter was experiencing a, a not dissimilar internal struggle. And like us, he, he wanted to uh, get things back to a place where they'd been before. And as a result, he was really torn up inside. He knew that he'd let Jesus down. He'd even cursed that he didn't know the man. And now Jesus was gone. He'd been there and he'd seen the empty tomb. And he felt deep remorse for the fact that he'd betrayed Jesus and was now even more confused by the reports that others had seen Jesus alive again. And he was suffering dreadful mental anguish. Clearly, he, he, he imagined that his life had been turned upside down. All that he'd experienced over the, the last three years had suddenly gone. So despairingly, he thought uh, he'd try and sort it out himself. The account in John's Gospel simply says, um, I'm going fishing. But what I really think he meant is, in the, behind that saying was, I quit and I'm going back to being a fisherman. It also reads in the same passage that the others even agreed to go and fish with him. And all night they toiled and they caught absolutely nothing. A big fat zero. And then a stranger on the shore nearby shouted out to them, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. And probably out of frustration, they thought, oh, we've got nothing to lose. And so they obeyed. And it resulted in a, in a catch that was so big, so um, heavy, that it threatened to break the net. You know, it's in the completely unusual, the unexpected moments like that one that Jesus suddenly turns up. And at the realisation that it was Jesus, Peter, being as impulsive as, as ever, he, he plunges overboard and swims like fury uh, towards the one he'd let down so badly. And what does Jesus do? Well, he, he, he simply makes them all breakfast. Now, I can't imagine the, the mixed feelings that Peter must have felt. But shortly after eating together, Jesus quietly takes him aside and reassures him that he really does still belong. He uses other words, but that's what he's doing. And he affirms that he still has a, a lifelong task before him. And in fact, it was only a couple of months or so later that, that Peter was used by the Lord to speak to a large crowd. And as a result, no less than 3,000 people found salvation that day. Jesus has a task for all of us. We are here on this earth for a purpose. Jesus is here even in, in our present situation. And what's more, He's a plan for each of us. As far back as the time of Jeremiah, the following words were written. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God's timing, you know, is always perfect. And it's not always what we expect either. We need to be patient and wait, whatever the circumstance, for God to reveal the next step of his plan for each of us.